Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. You can buy everything that's for sale, hunting humans, eating humans, torturing humans. What conspiracy theories do you think are too logical to ignore? Google Maps only asks you for feedback on its navigation when it knows it did a good job. I use navigation all the time, and I find that when it gets me to the destination on time or earlier than predicted, I get a notification asking to rate the trip. But if it gets me there after it originally estimated, I never get that notification. Most CEOs and politicians are psychopaths. There's a book by the journalist John Ronson called The Psychopath Test, in it he discusses how the rate of psychopathy is roughly four times higher in CEOs than it is in the regular public. Certain qualities of psychopaths can sometimes lead to a successful business life it would seem. Things like a lack of empathy, so they can make cuts and layoffs where other people might ride down a sinking ship off a company. Being a psychopath doesn't make anyone a serial killer so it was kind of off topic for me to bring it up here maybe. Something like 1% of the general population has psychopathic traits, whereas with CEOs it's 4%. A lot of the other traits were less sinister, being charming, and having multiple marriages for example. I don't want to portray it some shocking indictment of capitalism because that's a disingenuous interpretation of the book. It deals with a lot of facets of psychopathy, and how's it diagnosed and, a ton of stuff. But a good portion of the book digs into whether or not psychopathy makes someone a more successful CEO or politician. Anyway, damn good read, I'm a big John Ronson fan. His other TED talk was about public shaming, another good watch that details a story from another book of his. Secret societies definitely exist. These societies exist but not necessarily in the structured way we'd like to think. People like to hang out with people who do similar things as they do. If you're a rich dude who likes talking about Fortune 500 companies, vacations all over the world, and has the money to play golf at country clubs all the time then you're not likely going to have much in common with some dude who works in a factory. These guys hang out with each other and just like any other group of friends you try to help out your buddies, it's just that unfortunately these guys wield so much more power than your average Joe. It's what makes Trump's whole thing about Mar-a-Lago so disgusting. He knows how the game works and he knows that if he holds his power meetings there, then more rich people will hang out there to be his buddy. It's bad enough that the rich have exclusive access to powerful people, but now Trump is profiting off of it. David Miscavige, the chairman of the Church of Scientology definitely murdered his wife and is getting off scot-free for it. Him and his wife got into a pretty heated argument in 2007, and she hasn't been seen since. Lawyers hired by David claim she is still alive and devotes 100% of her time to work at the Church of Scientology, which is why she hasn't been seen since August 2007. In 2013, a former member of the church had filed a missing person report that was closed after a few officers had spoken and seen Mrs. Miscavige, even though there's no evidence whatsoever of this meeting. All missing persons reports now are turned down since this investigation is forever closed. There are theories that many famous female stars who were blacklisted, Megan Fox is a good example, were blacklisted because they refused to sleep with directors and producers. For quite a bunch of movies after calling Michael Bay a Nazi or something like that. Also Courtney Love openly dropped a hint in a 2005 interview of what was going on with Harvey Weinstein's parties in an interview. Obviously nobody took her seriously because by then quite a bunch of people already hated her. I took a lift in New York City and chatted the driver, a smart young guy with a Spanish accent. The conversation took a fast and fun dive into conspiracies. At the time, the Pizzagate theory was everywhere and he asked me about it. I said the story itself was too stupid to be true as is, but I thought it was possible somewhere in the political world there was a child trafficking ring. Then he proceeds to tell me about Haiti, where he's from. That he grew up afraid of vans or big cars. All of the kids he grew up with knew at least one kid who disappeared forever in a van. That as kids they knew they were being targeted and that worst of all, no one seemed to care because nothing happened. I was horrified but glad he told me. I believe him. With the number of millionaire and billionaires that are psychopaths or similar, there must be a few super rich serial killers out there. By extension there must be people making money supplying victims in the same way Epstein was supplying girls to the wealthy who wanted to scratch an itch. With the money, power and influence would come governments and intelligence agencies willing to overlook or cover up terrible actions for leverage. I mean, we already know for a fact that doing it with small children is a popular pastime for people who are so wealthy that their money has made them numb to all normal human experiences. 
If violating little kids is what it takes for them to feel something, it's not a small jump to simply killing people. It makes sense that to become a billionaire, you have to completely F over so many people, that by the time you achieve it, you'll be so emotionally numb and paranoid that even with all that money, you'll have trouble finding anything to spend it on that actually excites you. Someone replied, I've worked for super rich psychopaths. They find ways to do heinous acts but not be seen as heinous. Example, one became a deputy sheriff so they could do ride-alongs once a week. I was called to pack a bag for them and found a service weapon. When they noticed me using a t-shirt to pick it up they just laughed and admitted they were only doing it so they could shoot people without it being illegal. I laughed and said, pretty sure it's still illegal. They laughed louder and said, no, it's not. Like someone else said, when you can buy everything that's for sale, you start buying everything that's not for sale. Hunting humans, eating humans, torturing humans. All things I truly believe many people want to do but would never admit. Some people can afford a world where they don't have to care what others think. The worst thing you can imagine has been done many times. There is a giant money laundering cycle driven by the sale of paintings. It's just a piece of canvas with some paint on it. I may understand some people would be willing to buy paintings from the Renaissance, but modern art is definitely a huge money laundering instrument. Don't want to file taxes on $400,000 private purchases from someone for something illegal? Not a problem. Here's a painting that you can say is worth $400,000 in a completely subjective manner, with the true item you want thrown in for free. Bingo. Jamie Lynn Spears, Miranda Cosgrove, Victoria Justice, etc. were forced to sleep with by Dan Schneider. Nickelodeon let him get away with a lot. There's so many feet jokes in all those shows. A lot of the interviews with those cast members get really awkward when they're around Dan. If you got to pursue your dream career when you really wanted it wouldn't you do just about anything? If you made Dan Schneider mad your career would be ruined and your dreams would be over. If anyone is interested, some podcasters by Revenge of the Sis have done extensive reporting on Schneider and his alleged abuses. I recommend their show in general, but they go in depth on the topic in a few different YouTube episodes. The Denver Airport Theory I mean the capstone of the building literally has the Freemason logo on it, there's some weird ass apocalypse murals on the walls, the runways look like a swastika, and there's a 50 foot tall horse statue with red glowing eyes. Building the airport cost $3 billion more than expected and the labor was piecemealed out through countless contractors, so nobody who built it knows the full scope of it. Oh and that 50 foot tall horse statue with red glowing eyes killed its creator. Denver airport is a weird place. Someone replied, I have a buddy who did work at DIA, he confirmed the whole underground thing goes way underground. He was let in an elevator with security and was escorted to a massive underground space, wasn't able to leave without security escorts, that whole thing. Plus DIA was one of the largest earth moving projects, at least in Colorado, I'm sure there's a stat somewhere for that, and they moved way more ground than seemed necessary. Dia's been undergoing renovations lately, and the marketing pokes fun at the conspiracy theories, it's quite funny actually. Blucifer, the demon horse, did kill its creator, but he's still Denver's favorite red-eyed demon horse. The Allies certainly knew about the Holocaust long before April-May 1945, they never just happened upon the camps as they were defeating Nazi Germany. This begs the question on why they never lifted a finger to stop the importations, destroy the rail lines to the camps, etc., but they never did despite them knowing what was going on. Someone replied, there's a holocaust happening in China against Muslims and we're not doing anything. Why do people still think that governments care about human rights etc.? That's all just a club to beat their opponents with. Same with companies who talk about how anti-racist or pro-LGBTQ they are, they don't actually care about being woke. It's about widening their prospective customers and encouraging people to repeat business, they follow social trends, nothing more. That civilizations have risen and fallen far earlier than we currently are aware. And that ancient civilizations were way more capable than we give them credit for. Perhaps more intelligent than we give them credit for, but it's really hard to hide some markers of advanced civilization like mass steel production. We're not any smarter, we just have more shoulders of giants to stand on. Saw a whole documentary on this about out-of-place artifacts. Basically artifacts that date back so old or are so strange they blow all history books out of the water. Two specific ones I remember was a hammer found in England with a fossilized hilt and a head of iron dating back millions of years. Also they found a gear made of aluminum in Siberia that was literally like 100 million years old. 
basically implying that some ancient societies have made it to a semi-modern state. That or time travel is real. Anyways most scientists threw them out at credible. I'm skeptical but it's still cool to think indefinitely possible considering how quickly humans got to this point. Relative to how long life's been on Earth. Both the media and governments are manipulated by corporations. Governments are not self-interested entities, in the West. They are composed of a revolving door of shills, who get their payout not by increasing government revenue, but by reducing it by way of corporate tax breaks, and getting their payouts in the form of future business interest, speaking gigs, board positions, etc. Journalism has been used this way frequently throughout history for many reasons. Napoleon Bonaparte wasn't short, Doc was paid to say vaccines cause autism, and Hitler used propaganda to promote his cause just to name a few. I strongly believe that sensationalist news articles are designed to divide the people so we don't look more deeply into the goings-on of our own government. I saw once that the Titanic that sank wasn't actually the Titanic but a very convoluted plan to cash out insurance from the damaged RMS Olympic. And that the Titanic retired in April 1935 under the name of RMS Olympic. It kinda makes sense, had pictures of the hull and some signature features that made it very convincing. 9-11 was allowed to happen so the government could go ahead with political agendas that would have been very unpopular otherwise. There were all kinds of advanced warnings that an attack was imminent, yet they were ignored. The attack allowed for the invasion and never-ending occupation of the Middle East, as well as the Patriot Act that allows for increased spying by the government, and was passed only about a month after 9-11. U.S. intelligence conducting organized blackmail operations out of Epstein's Island. The prosecutor handling Epstein's old case was told to back off and go easy because Epstein was intelligence. Acosta's departure from the administration confirmed that this was not just a rumor. So as an American, I would really like to know exactly who was blackmailing who, how far it extended, and what political decisions were affected. Avril Lavigne actually killed herself and the Avril Lavigne now is her double. She was the Joan Jett of the early 2000s. Really popular too. But from the inside she was very depressed from the get-go and the death of her grandpa was the last straw. Melissa Vandela was hired to replace. But Melissa couldn't hit the necessary rock notes that Avril could, so they just gave her a more poppy style of music. This also supports my girlfriend theory. In the video clip of her song Girlfriend, Avril steals another girl's, also Avril Lavigne, boyfriend which is a metaphor for Melissa stealing Avril's whole identity after her death. This and the fact that she wrote more radio appealing music for other artists, Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson for example. There is a version by Avril on YouTube, makes for the theory that Melissa got Avril's more pop-esque music she originally intended for other musicians. Mattress Firm is a drug cartel or a money laundering company or maybe they're laundering money for the drug cartels. I don't know, but whatever it is, they're up to no good. Where I live there's an area that has three of them within about five miles of one another. Who are all these people buying mattresses so frequently that you need three stores to keep up with the sales? According to a few different sources, Joey Diaz the comedian being one of them, the cartels also use those Mexican street food vendors in LA, and I'm sure elsewhere, to launder money through also, as well as laundromats and other cash businesses. In Mexico some banks, like Santander, HSBC, have holes in the side of banks for the cartels to throw bags of money through like you see in the movies for laundry or waste in big buildings but for illegal bloodstained cocaine cartel cash. The true conspiracies are right in front of our eyes. The extent of corporate control over the democratic process is no secret but we're all too busy debating the moon landing, flat earthers and anti-vaxxers. Big media headlines keep us docile, so we remain polarized against one another over trivial topics. If we didn't need to fight over dumb things we might start revolting against corporate-run government maybe focusing on reforming the system we live within. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for a free tinfoil hat. Click the right box for the conspiracy playlist. Let us know in the comments what you think about these stories. Find these John Ronson books linked in the video description below.